2017 marks the 75th anniversary of the Kokoda Track campaign. And tonight, we recognise the significance of some of the great battles of the Second World War. Uh, my name is uh, Arnold William Forrester. Uh, AIF returned. And uh, uh, I was called up with the uh, 18 age group and uh, uh, as uh, the names were out on the bivouac and the names were put in a hat and uh, for, for once had to go a special mission. So they uh, put the, the names of the uh, group in the hat the section and uh, first name was pulled out was the name of Gordon Hunt and they said oh Oh, Hunty can't go, he's got a widow, widowed mother, he's the sole learner. So they said, call another name. So they call another name, and that is me. <laughs> From July 1942 to early 1943, Australian troops in the Owen Stanley Range and on the beaches of northern Papua saw some of the most desperate and vicious fighting encountered in the Second World War. Yeah, I heard, we were in bed about half past eleven and heard this droning and I said, and I said to the other fella, that doesn't sound like, uh, that sounds like a radio to me. And they said, and all of a sudden, it wasn't long, but it was a 30 odd bombers, drop bombs, all around the place. Some of the first fighting occurred on the 23rd of July with the Papuan Infantry Battalion fighting alongside the 39th Australian Infantry Battalion. The 39th was poorly equipped and fighting at the end of a very long and difficult supply chain. The village of Isirava was the site of one of several desperate battles fought by Australian troops along the Kokoda Track. The 39th had to dig in with bayonets, bully beef tins and helmets, and on August 26th, the Japanese clashed with the 39th's forward outpost at Ishirava, heralding that their next attack was developing. The Ishirava battle was over. I'll never forget, we'd be there for two or three days, and the Japs would come in, waves of them would come and attack him. And uh, our CO, who was Honor, a great fellow, he was a wonderful leader, one of men, he came round and told us, chaps, if the 2nd 14th Battalion, who we were expecting to come through to us, don't arrive this afternoon, the Japs will overrun us tonight. Well, that was a comforting thought. I thought, you know, wouldn't they you sleep well without me? Anyhow, fortunately they arrived. <laughs> they did arrive and uh, they were magnificent. They were the uh, Kingsbury, one of Victoria Cross, and Others, uh, they were one of the highest decorated battalions in the IF. And they, we stayed with them even though they wanted us to uh, leave them. Over the coming days, fighting swirled all around as the 2nd 14th Battalion arrived to relieve the weary fighters of the 39th. Although the 39th now had the chance to withdraw for a well-earned rest, its commander, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Honor, aware of the onslaught the 2nd 14th would face, decided it would remain in place. Fierce fighting continued and Australian troops were significantly outnumbered and in danger of being overwhelmed. Well, I'm John Honor and I'm the youngest of Ralph's four children. I have two older brothers who were born before the war and then my sister was born, I think, 1943 and I was born just after the war. 25 years ago, I went to the 50th anniversary in Melbourne of the 39th Battalion and the Kokoda Campaign. And I met some of the diggers there and they actually told me more. They, uh, one of them I remember pointed to my father and said, I didn't really know him in her, but he saved my life. He saved all our lives. Approximately 625 Australians were killed along the Kokoda Track and over 1,600 were wounded. Casualties due to sickness exceeded 4,000. I, th I think he loved the 39th because they just followed him and gave so much. It was extraordinary. The, the, the four pillars there which had the mateship. Mateship, courage, sacrifice, endurance. How's that? Um, and 
to me, my chip was the biggest thing. That was. Yes, absolutely, endurance. I wear that, uh, I wear the, uh, the red band here. Faith and endurance. Yeah. He fought for truth against lies and for love against hate. In the end, do Kokoda for king or country, he did it for the men, to save the men. Tonight, as we commemorate the 75th anniversary, we remember the Australians and Papua New Guineans who sacrificed everything during the Kokoda campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your host for this evening, journalist, Seven News presenter and KTF ambassador, Sharon Gadella. <laughs>